Cycling versus pedestrians. There's been a lot of interest in Britain this week over the sad story of a woman cyclist who died after an altercation with Oriel Gray, a pedestrian. Oriel Gray has been charged with manslaughter. But should Oriel Gray really be going to prison? I'm joined by Mary Dejeski, who is a Spectator contributor, as well as another Mary, Mary Wakefield, who is our commissioning editor. Mary Dejewski, I'll start with you. Um, your piece, which was under the headline, Cyclists have been given a licence to ride on the pavement, uh, went down uh, a storm on the Spectator website, it attracted a lot of interest. Uh, and judging from the comments and so on, there's, there is a lot of concern out there, obviously, especially among motorists and pedestrians, um, that cyclists are being given uh, the right to ride on the pavement and that the treatment of Oriel Gray is disgraceful. Could you just outline for any viewers that haven't uh, been following it, what's happened to Oriel Gray and the details of that particular case? Well, what appears to have happened is that she was walking along and it has to be said she is a 46-year-old woman um, who is partially sighted um, and has various other disabilities. And she was walking along the pavement and she felt that a cyclist um, was coming rather close to her cycling on the pavement. And what is said is that, and was given in evidence, is that she shouted, swore at the cyclist to get on the road and get off the pavement. And then she put her hand out and there is also a question of whether she actually hit her. But the consequence was catastrophic and tragic, which was that the cyclist um, was pushed or fell off her bike into the path of a vehicle that could not stop and she was killed. And that is the source of the manslaughter charge that the cyclist faced. And she was convicted of manslaughter. She was sentenced to three years in prison. And um, I think her lawyer says that she is um, going to appeal. But as yet, there's no news on that. It's also, I have to say, that I'm not clear whether she's been given bail or whether she's been sent straight to prison. My impression is that she's been sent to prison. And I mean, I've seen the video and it's, it's pretty horrifying because of what happens. But uh, it's not clear whether she pushed her or not. But if, if Oriel Gray did push her, and of course, everybody feels sorry for her in many ways, because that was obviously not her intention to, uh, to kill this cyclist. Uh, if she did push her, though, that is uh, a direct cause of the death of the cyclist. So there is a case to be made um, that it is manslaughter if she did push her. Is it? Is there not? Yes, I mean, there, there's the same case that might be made um, against a cyclist or indeed a driver um, who knocks over somebody um, if he's um, speeding um, or um, there was a case of a cyclist who killed a um, pedestrian on a crossing, I think, um, and he was sentenced to 18 months in prison, only 18 months, even though his bike was defective and he cut through a red light and he had no brakes. Um, it seems to me that there's a large, um, there's a complete disproportion here. Yes. Um, Mary, number two. Uh, uh, Mary says in her piece, you know, which of us has not at some point wanted to ch shout it out or wanted to shout out or even push a cyclist because cyclists are often quite obnoxious on the roads. Uh, they drive people crazy. Um, do you share that feeling? I do. I mean, I hate cyclists for the most part. Um, I think in this case, um, the worry is the disproportionate rate. Like you can hate a cyclist and sort of swear at them. And a lot of us behave very badly. But I do think there's a problem with the disproportionate rage people feel towards cyclists. And I do think it endangers them in some cases because we're going fast. You know, I've had people try and stick um, quite rightly in some ways, you know, a walking stick through my front wheel because they're enraged. This is particularly kind of going through Kensington Gardens on a Yeah, you're a self-hating cyclist. I'm a self-hating cyclist, yeah. but I mostly hate a different sort of cyclist. But that's, a, that's a getting a little esoteric, the difference between cyclists. <laughs> it's the commuting cyclists, you know, going down, going super fast, who are unbelievably rude, who are the, the worst lot, I think. But um, 
So some of the things you can do to a cyclist when you're feeling a bit cross actually is incredibly dangerous for them. Uh, in this case, you know, a spasm of rage in, involves the death of someone. So one of the lessons here is, is, I think, don't be so disproportionately furious that you forget what your actions can, can do to someone going fast on a bike. Mary, Mary Dajewski, I think that's right, is it not? That um, cyclists are scared because uh, a lot of the time they're driving pretty fast through uh, quite dangerous roads. And the reason they behave in the way that they do, and it's a way of behaving that annoys a lot of people, is because they're frightened a lot of the time. And when people are scared, uh, they tend to act aggressively. Well, I think that's partly true. But I think if you, if, you, if you take London, and it has to be said, this incident actually didn't happen in London. Um, it happened in Huntingdon, which might be seen sort of philosophically as maybe closer to a cycling city such as Cambridge um, than to London. But if we look at London, um, then I would say look, London has spent exorbitant amounts of money trying to separate cyclists um, from pedestrians and cyclists from traffic. There are cycle lanes all over London that have backed up the traffic, that have extended people's journeys, if they're in cars or buses, um, incredibly. It now takes me twice as long to get from my flat to um, another part of central London than it did before the introduction of cycle lanes. Huge amounts of money. And the, you look at these, cycle, these cycling lanes at many times of day, and there's hardly anybody in them. All the cyclists are in, uh, are in the, the bus lanes or the car lanes because they find it quicker. But the car lanes and the bus lanes, they're now confined to 20 miles an hour. And what happens is that commuting cyclists are actually going faster than 20 miles an hour. But Mary, that's not our fault. You know, direct your rage at Sadiq Khan. You're speaking as a cyclist here. As a cyclist. <laughs> yeah. It's not... Well, there's Mary well, and the cyclist. Well, it is your fault for not using the cycle No, lanes. why don't... You know, we didn't ask for these cycle lanes, all of us. This is... Look, there's a lot of local government, um, a war on the car going on. And I blame Boris, frankly, but, you know, that's another thing. Um, and But it's not the fault of individual cyclists. So I feel like we receive the built-up rage of the frustrated motorist who should be angry at government, both local and big government, for its war on, on cars. And that's not our fault. I didn't want a ridiculous cycle lane down the Marylebone Road, which frustrates me more than anyone else. You know, we're, 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 we're sort of channeled past bus stops where it's very hard not to hit anyone because the cycle lane goes straight past the, you know, yes. place where you, it's, I don't think it's our fault. Well, I think it's your fault for not using the lanes that you've been but given. But why should I have um, to use them if they're... If therefore, for riding on the pavement. I, I don't think there's any excuse for riding on the pavement. But I completely agree with that. But, but do you think perhaps the reaction is disproportionate? I mean, obviously, in this case, it was. And the whole thing's very unfortunate. Well, I think that, I th I think that it's possible to say that the reaction can be disproportionate because... Everything has now been piled on pedestrians. It's not just the cyclists. We've got e-scooters, we've got e-bikes, we've got skateboards, and everybody's really taken it as open season for the pavement. But, but that affects... And yet that's the only place where pedestrians can walk. But that affects us too. You should, I mean, the, you should see the trouble cyclists have with e-bikes on the bike lane. You know, they're going at 30 miles an hour. We're scattered like exactly. minnows. So, yeah. you know, everyone suffers yeah, from... No, I have every sympathy with that, but I do draw the line at cyclists on the pavement okay. because I think that's, that, that, that is really the... That's where there is competition and the only place where pedestrians uh, can and have, an, have a right to feel, to yeah, feel I safe. I think that's totally right. But maybe a little, a little finger wag rather than an actual shove would be more proportionate. That's mine. Um, a little finger wag and a... Um, <laughs> A use of language, shall we say. Okay, um, let's compromise on use of language. <laughs> as I said in my piece, swearing is really my register, but I understand people who do. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to interject between two uh, disagreeing Marys, but I, I, do, I do wonder if uh, the headline of your piece is, is true. Uh, you know, have uh, cyclists, do cyclists now have the licence to ride on the pavement? Does, does this ruling mean that? 
Well, I think it's fair to extrapolate from the ruling that it does recognise um, the right of a cyclist to, uh, to, to, to ride on the pavement, which wasn't there before, because my understanding is that the default position before was that in most places it's illegal for cyclists to, to, to ride on the pavement, even though that isn't generally enforced. Um, but there, there, there seems to be a slight grey area in this case, because the council of, 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 of all people seem to seem to be confused as to whether this particular part of the pavement was theoretically something called a shared space where cyclists could ride on the pavement and where pedestrians were expected to share nicely. Um, it didn't look, when you see the pictures and you see the CCTV, it didn't look to me very much like a shared space, but um, that grey area, I suspect, is going to loom rather large if there's an appeal. Isn't that the problem then, uh, Mary W., that, uh, d d that this particular part of the road was not very clear what it was? This case is, is an odd one, isn't it, altogether? Because, um, you know, what, what what's her name? Oriel Grey is... Mm. is reacts oddly. She's not just waving at her. She actually, as, as I've seen it looking at the footage, deliberately blocks the cyclist. The cyclist, had she not been 77 herself and a bit bewildered, would have gone right to the wall side, but she didn't. She allowed herself to be ushered into the road where there was a driver who I don't think was paying attention. So, But I also think that um, the whole publicity surrounding the case is less likely to make me ride on pavements. I'm now more scared. I'm not incentivized. I'm never going on a pavement again. It's it's a very interesting and unusual case in the in 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 this it also in the, in the aspect that the two cyclists were women of a certain age, um, and normally when you have these the, the, these pavement conflicts, you've got young men in lycra dashing to get somewhere or trying to deliver something, um, and you've got um, say um, an elderly woman or somebody partially sighted trying to navigate all the obstacles otherwise on the pavement. That's the usual conflict of interest on pavements. This was slightly different. Mary and Mary, I think we will have to leave it there. Thank you both very much for coming on to Spectator TV. Mm -hmm.